The doctor is in. Hi guys, it's Dr. Sal from DrSecrets.com. Thank you so much for joining in. Today we're going to take a look at Are Doctors Rich? That is the million dollar question that I'm going to answer in this episode. But before I do, let's look at a joke. I came across this, it's by a humorist called James H. Bohr, and he says, I got the bill for my surgery, now I know why those doctors are wearing masks for. So are doctors really greedy, overcompensated, money-sucking leeches? Well, the answers are not that simple. Take a look at this slide. This slide here is showed on a previous episode of what we make across specialties. And these are the kind of numbers that would be shown to you by the media and news outlets. But immediately your common sense should uh, come to you and you should say, well, these, with the, if doctors are really taking home these kind of fabulous compensation packages, how come they're not all driving Ferraris? Hello? So to explain, let me show you something else and ask you a question. Is it possible to tell the truth and still be lying? or lying while telling the truth. Take a look at this slide here. It says, psycho the rapist equals psychotherapist. Now, psychotherapist may be a lot of things, but rapist is not one of them. <laughs> but if you look at the letters just in the sequence, they are equivalent. All of the letters on the left of the equation are represented on the right. The only difference is the way the information is being parsed. Similarly, when you're looking at uh, physician incomes, it's not fair to simply look at the gross. You have to consider that a doctor's income is like one of those Russian dolls. The only way you can really understand what we actually take home in our compensation packages is you have to shed away all those other layers. So you have to look at the, our taxes, our loans, our professional dues, our operating costs. And this little doll here in the center, that's what we're really left with. So that's not to say that we don't make a good income. We do. But the numbers that you'll see coded um, in public are grossly inflated. And I'll show it in more granular detail here on this slide. So this guy here, he's a family doctor like myself, and this is his uh, purse at the end of a year. So again, when you see this, you may think, wow, that's a fabulous uh, pay package. But there's a bunch of information missing from this uh, gross number. The first is that he's going to be in debt. Before he makes his first penny out of medical school, the moment he walks out that door, he's already in debt on average $100,000 to $150,000 just in medical school bills and fees. The other thing not taken into consideration is opportunity loss. For those decade that he's studying and I'm studying and all the rest of us are studying, that is a decade that we can't work somewhere else and make a, a normal income. So if you take, um, if you consider even just the uh, what do you call it, the minimum minimum income per year is, um, in the U.S. I think it's about $15,000 a year. Across 10 years, that's $150,000 unrealized income that this guy doesn't have. So he has to now catch up to his peers that were making that um, minimum income. And it's probably a lot more than that because most people won't start off in a position and stay there for 10 years at minimum wage. They usually will increment uh, as their career improves. So there's also, so that's uh, between an under, another 150000 to maybe up to three, four $400,000 of unrealized um, income that he has to catch up on. Now, after he does graduate, so in addition to those loads around his neck to start off with, uh, after he incorporates his practice, he then has to start paying accounting fees, which uh, works out to about $1,500 a year, legal fees about four hundred. dollars um, then there's a bunch of uh, other payments that you would never have heard of, not even known about. Uh, some of these, using myself as an example, each year I pay $2,000 for um, doctor dues just for the privilege of saying that I'm a member of the group of doctors in this area. Then on top of that, I also have to pay college dues locally, which is 1750 and here's another racket. In addition to the local uh, college, then I also have to pay a national college as well, which is another $1,119. Then I also have to pay malpractice insurance, which is another $3,150. And if you're in some um, specialties like obstetrics, uh, gynecology, etc., 
the liability insurance is astronomical. Then the other thing to consider is um, if my f five, 10 fingers here uh, represents $100,000 uh, just for operating costs, that's um, to pay for rental of the space where I work from, pay secretaries, pay for licensing fees for my computer system, etc. Uh, those operating costs work out to about 30%. So before I even take home a cent of each month's earnings, three of these fingers is already um, lopped off uh, just to pay for operating costs. That's something you wouldn't um, hear about in the media. And then there's more. Taxes is a huge hit. If those seven fingers that are left over are now the 10 again, I'm trying to make this simple because that's why we pay accountants to do this, this uh, mathematical arcane stuff. So anyway, if those seven fingers are now 10 fingers again, uh, roughly two of them uh, go off for corporate uh, taxes, then the money that's passed through the corporate tax to you as a doctor, then you're taxed again at another 40% marginal rate, and that's what you're left with. So it's a huge hit from taxes. And then to add insult to injury, we don't get a golden parachute at the end of the day. You don't get a gold watch when you retire unless you buy it for yourself. Doctors and physicians in general are considered to be sophisticated um, uh, self-contractors or self-employed. So we don't get a pension at the end of the day. Um, you don't get employer matching RSPs and all that kind of stuff. You ha out of that income that you make there, that, that 185000 you have to set aside some of that for yourself for retirement later. So it's not all gravy that you can spend every month for present needs. And then you also have that debt from medical school, which is you know, maybe four or $500 a month for years on end. So it's not as sweet as it seems at first. Now, again, I'm not saying that doctors don't make a good income. We do make good incomes, but it's nothing like what you would see quoted, the figures that you see in the media. It's, it's a slow process, but you do make a good income at the end of the day. And you do have to also throw off that, that hurdle of the lost income that you didn't realize when you were in school, plus the, the bills that you rack up while you were in medical school. Now, let's look at a few doctors who actually are rich. Here's four of them. This guy here, Dr. Patrick, he invented an um, anti-cancer drug. He's worth $12 billion, and I think he's the richest person in Los Angeles, as far as I remember. Then there's this other guy here, Dr. Frist. He's, um, he's one of the co-founders of the Hospital Corporation of America, worth a cool eight billion. Then there's uh, Dr. Frost over here. Um, he started a pharmaceutical company. He's uh, five billion. And uh, this guy here, Dr. Gary, he, he holds a bunch of patents on um, spinal procedures. He's worth one and a half billion dollars. So these guys are doing real good. But make no mistake about it, these guys are doctors in name only. You cannot call their secretary and ask them to book you for a pap test and a prostate exam next week. These guys are really businessmen, but they still hold an MD title. So that's it in a wrap. I hope it was a real eye opener for you. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe so that as I upload new videos, you'll be in the loop. Thanks again. Thanks for watching. Get notified of new videos. Subscribe now.